Today I'm behind it with a brand new 2021 BMW X7 and this is the biggest and most luxurious SUV within BMW's very crowded SUV lineup. Yes, you have the X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7 and soon X8. Yes, BMW has a very crowded SUV lineup. Now in this video, I'm going to go over the changes for 2021 and cover everything there is to know about this brand new X7. So you can decide if this full-size luxury SUV from BMW is right for you. All right, let's get started. Now normally I would be driving right now. I would be driving this X7 around town and telling you about the drive and also be telling you about the features and things that you would find on the inside and outside for this X7. But since there's so much to cover, I'm going to sit right here in the parking lot and I'm going to go over those luxury features and features overall first then go for a drive. Now why don't we just start out with the outside. The X7, since it is the biggest and most luxurious SUV within BMW's lineup, of course BMW had to give it the biggest kidney grills ever seen on a BMW. Those kidney grills up front are massive, enormous. If you think those kidney grills look big in videos or in pictures, Think again, wait until you actually see them in person. They are absolutely massive. Now, besides the gigantic kidney grills, you have some Icon adaptive full LED headlights on both sides. They come with auto high beam, and of course, they do have very distinctive looking LED daytime running lights. Also, you get LED fog lights with this X7. Now, everything put together, right? The front end is big, bold, very upright, and it does look a little bit different than say the X5 or the X6, there's something about it that just looks bigger and bolder. And yeah, overall, I like the front end. Now moving to the side, that's how you could tell the X7 is enormous. It just looks big. It's very long. It's very tall. It's very wide. And this is a good example of how big it is. Look at those wheels. Those wheels, at first glance, I thought they were 19-inch or 20-inch wheels. No, standard, you get 21-inch wheels, and they look okay. They don't look too big. They don't actually look very big on this X7, and that kind of shows you how big this X7 is on the outside. Now, you do have a lot of satin aluminum trim on the side, you know, towards the bottom of the door, which is nice, and also window surrounds, they're aluminum, satin aluminum, and same thing, look at the roof rails. Very beefy satin aluminum roof rails that you could actually use. They're, they're not just for design purposes. They could actually be used which is really nice. Now moving on to the back, of course, you have the usual large privacy glass, a spoiler, shark antenna on top. You do have some nice looking LED tail lamps out back, and you have dual chrome finishers out back too, which is pretty nice. And if you wanted to tow, you could opt for the trailer hitch, as you see here, and the X7 could tow about 6,000 pounds, depending on how you configure it, anywhere from 5,400 pounds to 6,000 pounds. Now moving out back, you have a power lift gate, of course. Now, now this design is a clamshell design just like the X5, so when you first open it, it's only the upper half. And you have to press a button to fold down the second half, right? Now, the good thing is if you want to close it, you just press the button on top and they both close simultaneously. The bad thing is they don't both open simultaneously. There is one extra step. Now, what's nice is from back here, if you think the loading height is too high, you can simply press a button and the X7 will lower for you because this X7 comes with adaptive air suspension. Yes, you can lower the ride height in the back for easier access. Now behind the third row, you have a good amount of room for groceries or small luggage. And on the side, you have a 12V outlet, you have a net to hold things. Underneath, you do have some uh, hidden storage. And on the left side, you have a whole bunch of switches. Yes, you have a lot of switches and a lot of controls everywhere inside this X7. There is a set of switches to fold down the second row, set of switches to fold down the third row, and a set of switches to fold down both the second row and the third row, or to lift up the second row and third row. The good thing is everything is at your fingertips and everything is one touch. You don't have to continuously hold it down. All you have to do is tap it and away it goes. Now the bad thing is since everything is electronically controlled, it's very slow, very, very slow. Once you press the button, you gotta wait about five seconds for anything to even happen and then you probably have to wait about a full 20 or 30 seconds for it to complete, whether to go down or up. 
right? So there's the good and bad to all these electronic switches and seats. Now, moving to the second row, if you do opt for the premium package, you do get soft closing automatic doors, which is really nice. And in the second row, you do have a whole bunch of switches. There's a lot more switches in the second row than even in the third row. So on the seat back, on the very top, there is a switch, and this is what you use to fold down the second row if you wanted to. Now there's another switch on the side. This is what you use to fold the second row forward or backwards to get into the third row. And then there's a separate set of switches on the side, and you use that to fold down or up the third row. So as you can see, there's a lot of switches and you just have to get used to which ones control what. Now, once you're in the third row, there's okay space. For emergencies, it's okay. You can see I'm five feet 10, my knees hit the seat back, but second row passengers can move forward a little bit to give uh, third row passengers a bit more room. So that's nice. You do get a pair of vents on top. And if you have the cold weather package, then you have a separate climate control just for the third row which is really nice. Now moving back to the second row, you do have two pairs of vents, also climate controls, heated seats, only if you opt for the cold weather package once again, right? But it's dual zone climate control, and you have USB ports and a 12V outlet, and again, all the, all the seat function is automatic, so you can recline and slide, and basically everything is automatic in the second row. What's also nice is on the doors on both sides, you do have switches for the sunshades, the automatic sunshades, if you do have the premium package. Also, you have switches to control the dual sunroofs on top. Yes, you can control the sunroofs even from the second row, and I haven't seen that before. That's pretty unique. Now, moving on front, very luxurious. Kind of looks like an X5. Overall design, shape, everything, except it's just a little bit bigger and there's a little bit more switches and a little bit more features. Just looking at a door panel, you can see there's a good use of aluminum and leather, but there's a whole bunch of switches and buttons. So this button on the bottom here control the sunshade for the second row. They will lift up or down both of them simultaneously, right? You have window lock, uh, you know, automatic windows. Those are pretty usual. Then you have a button for the power folding mirrors, okay? Then you have a switch for the power lift gate in the back, right? And then on the door, you have your memory seats. And then you have a switch and a button for the second row. So if you wanted to uh, move the second row forward so passengers could get in the third row, you can use a switch and do that. And if you wanted to only do it on one side, there's a button that you press, and then you use the switch, right? So a lot of switches for the, the, the electronic seats in here. Everywhere there's switches and buttons, right? Now moving to light control, there's a whole bunch of things that you could do, but basically I think you just leave it in auto and that's it and don't worry about it. Auto high beam, right? Uh, when the lights turn on, everything is automatic and uh, same thing with your fog lights. Steering wheel, of course you have a leather wrapped steering wheel, has a good thickness, overall feels good and it looks good. You do have a heated steering wheel on the bottom. You have a whole bunch of switches on both sides to control volume, phone, you know, scrolling, muting, your cruise control, all that. You do have paddle shifters in the back. And also look at the Live Cockpit Pro. That's about a 12 inch digital gauge cluster. Very, very nice. The interface looks good and it's nice and bright. You have your maps in the middle and on the right side, you can scroll through a few things. For example, your G's or your radio station or you know what driving mode you're in, your fuel economy, stuff like that. However, I gotta say that this is a little bit more limiting than say the one inside Audi's which gives you multiple views and there's just more things to look at. This live cockpit pro is kind of just limited in terms of what you see. Now moving to the infotainment system that is now running iDrive 7. This screen is just as big, 12.3 inches. And one of the new things for 2021 is finally the addition of Android Auto in addition to Apple CarPlay. So that is one big change. Now this touch screen is beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's very responsive, very bright. I love the interface. You can figure out just messing around with the menus. Pretty easy to figure out, although there's a lot of things you could adjust from lights to audio to safety systems. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that you can adjust. Now you could do everything with just your fingers with touch, or you could use this iDrive interface with a big scroll knob 
that you could scroll and point left and right, press down. There's a few quick navigating buttons that you can use in conjunction with this screen. But if you didn't want to use that, just simply use your hands and fingers and it works just the same. Now, part of the premium package, you do get something called gesture control, which this screen will read your fingers. Now, I'll admit, I didn't take time to learn this whole thing. I'm just trying to you know, mess with it and just to do this with the volume. It kind of works and it kind of doesn't. So I don't know how useful that is. I don't know how many people will actually remember all the gestures and try it on and on and on, right? I think it's just easier to just touch or use the volume knob. That's just my opinion. Now underneath the screen, you have a button for your driver system features and inside this X7, you pretty much get it all. Emergency braking, warning, lane assist, line spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, that's all included. The, unfortunately, the only thing not included is adaptive cruise control because that's part of a bigger package that adds on more advanced things like automatic uh, lane changing. So unfortunately, adaptive cruise control is not standard. Underneath that, you have a small little screen to control your climate control. It's actually pretty bright. It works pretty well. You have a few buttons to control auto, your fan speed, your temperature, right? And then you have a row for other things like the froster option and so forth. And you get heated seats if you opt for the cold weather package. Underneath that, you have a row of presets. These are kind of like favorites. So you can program them to go to certain places uh, that you use often. You have a volume knob. So underneath this cover, you do have wireless charging and space for other things, two cup holders and additional USB port. Now the shifter is just like all the other BMWs. They kind of work the same, kind of don't. You have to hold down the button and then you just press up to reverse back down right or going to manual and there is a button for parking. Now this X7 is equipped with parking assistant package, which automatically parks for you and it gives you the surround view with 3D view, which is a 360 view of your X7, which is really nice. So of course you get a view of what's behind you and everywhere around you. And I love the animation when you're going from one side to another, looks pretty nifty. Now around the shifter, you have the start engine button and also drive mode. So you could select sport and you could customize it. So basically sport automatically changes everything to sport, but if you wanted to just say adjust the steering or the throttle or suspension, you can. And then of course you have the comfort, eco and you could adjust eco and eco pretty much adjust like the climate control and stuff like that and you have adaptive where the x7 will kind of predict your driving conditions and will adapt to your driving style so pretty cool now besides the auto hold brake and uh, hill descent you do have a switch to control your height control so if you want to lower your x7 or raise it right you can but the x7 will automatically adjust depending on your driving speed. On top, you have home link buttons under rear view mirror and controls for the dual sunroofs, which you already get in the second row, but again, you get up here. So of course you can open the big panoramic one up here and for the second row, and you can open and close the little one for the third row passenger. All right, I'm finally behind the wheel. So now let me talk about how this X7 feels on the road and how it drives. First, like most luxury SUVs out there, one of the things that you'll notice right away once you start driving is the seatbelt retracts. And it's the same with this X7. I know it's a little gimmicky, but I fall for it every time I love it. It just makes you feel like it's special. Another thing I noticed right away is when you're getting inside the X7, it's actually a little bit of a challenge. This X7 is quite high. So when it's in standard height mode, uh, for some of you guys on the shorter side, you may have difficulty getting in because this X7 does sit higher than the X5 and of course the X3. So that is something else I noticed right away when I was trying to get in. But once you get in, what I like is this commanding view, right? Of course you can adjust the height, but the normal height, you know, I definitely feel like this is more like a full size SUV. I'm sitting a little bit higher and overall commanding view and visibility is fantastic, fantastic. Now visibility overall is great. Besides the elevated and commanding view because of the seating position, but the windows everywhere is enormous, enormous. Uh, front windshield is big, I can see well over the hood. Same thing on the side windows, the door panels are nice and low, so the windows are humongous. Same thing in the blind spot, even though you have blind spot monitoring, but blind spot is good. And the rear visibility is also good. I mean, the rear tailgate window is nice and big. So visibility, 
overall is good. Driving position is also good. Now what's also good, no, I take that back. What's fantastic is the suspension and the comfort of this drive right now. It is so, so soft. It is unbelievably soft, like you're, you're sitting on a cloud. I mean, I thought the X5 suspension was good. This X7 is a whole other level. I mean, literally, you're, you're not feeling anything. You're just kind of floating over. Right now, I'm in comfort mode, so I'm not in sport. I'll test out sport in a little bit, but in comfort mode, man, is it smooth. It's really, really smooth in a, in a good way, in a good way. And uh, those of you guys looking for a, a really comfortable ride, yeah, you will get that in this X7. Now, besides the comfortable suspension, the seats up here are pretty good too. I mean, they're, they're a little bit on the harsher side, a stiffer side. I, I kind of expected them to be a little bit more soft, but overall isn't too bad. The bolstering is good. Unfortunately, you have to opt for real leather. Yes, real leather costs additional money, which I think is silly uh, for a luxury car, especially with this price tag, but yeah, unfortunately you do. But if you do opt for leather, it smells good, the shape, uh, the design, right? The texture all feel pretty good. But you know, right now the seat back, you know, bolsters holding my back in, the bottom cushion is okay. Although, like I said, I expected a little softer, it's a little bit stiffer, but you know, overall isn't too bad. And same thing with the second row and third row. The second row felt just as good, just as good. And in terms of space, I mean, there's loads of it, loads of it. Up front, of course, you could see plenty of headroom, right? Shoulder room, hip room. I mean, this is like a full size SUV, so space should not be a problem. So up front, uh, plenty big. Second row, same thing. If you have the second row all the way pushed back, I have almost like 12 inches of leg room, so plenty, plenty of space in the second row. And you know what, about the same in headroom and a third row. Third row is not bad. If you move up the second row a little bit, yeah. I mean, there's good space for adults. Okay, so just test it out, acceleration. I had a little bit of a straightaway. Now, I was in comfort mode, and I know, I know if I go in sport mode, it'll make a big difference, but in comfort mode, acceleration was, is, uh, is good, you know, doesn't feel too slow, but didn't feel too lively either. Now, because this is the base trim, this is not like the M50i or the Alpina one, this one comes with the standard three liter turbocharged i6 made it to an eight speed automatic. Now, this is the same engine that you find in the X5, and I loved it. I loved it when I test drove the X5, and it's really no different with this X7. Right now, driving around town, this transmission is butter smooth. I, I can't even tell when it's shifting. It's really, really, uh, really, really nice. And, you know, acceleration is good. There's not a whole lot of sound. Um, I don't hear much from the engine or exhaust. It is very muted, it is very quiet in here. But now, one big change for 2021 is that this engine is mated to now a 48 volt mild hybrid engine. Yes, uh, there's a mild hybrid engine now attached and it's supposed to help with the engine auto start stop functionality and help with other things that may need a quick jolt. Now, what's strange is, Fuel economy actually went down on this X7, even with that attached. So that's a little bit of a head scratcher. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Now, as for braking, I'm a little surprised. The, the pedal is a little mushy. It, it does feel a little mushy, which means that, you know, there's like a little give and you gotta press down a little bit harder. And because of the comfortable air suspension, I do feel like there, the body moves forward when you brake, especially when you're braking hard, right? I didn't expect that. I mean, you usually get that with heavy, big vehicles, big trucks. I did not expect that with X7. So the brakes, I'll just say it's so-so. It's not as fantastic as the other things I've mentioned. Now I mentioned about how quiet it is in here. It, it is really quiet. It, it, it's, it's almost like EV car quiet. It is very, very well insulated in here. No wind noise at all, none. Nothing from the road, right? Actually, nothing from the road. Almost nothing from the engine, unless you really accelerate. 
and cars passing by, I really don't hear it. I mean, it is dead quiet in here. Now, as for steering, I mentioned about this nice steering wheel ready, it feels good, but the steering feel right now is just so-so. There's actually quite a lot of steering play, a lot more than I expected, and the weight is okay, but because of the steering play, it makes me feel um, like the steering is a little vague. I'm not too in control, right? But again, this is comfort mode, right? And this will get adjusted in sport mode. So next, see my gesture control just popped up again. Uh, that That's really, really bothering me. Okay, so next, I'm gonna put this X7 in sport mode. I'm just gonna leave it default where everything, everything is turned on. So let's see how it is now. With sport mode, I can tell the steering did get heavier. I could tell that it's a little bit heavier. So for those of you guys that enjoy the drive, uh, you'll enjoy this a little bit more. Unfortunately, the precision didn't get any better. There's still a lot of steering play. So yeah, it does improve upon it somewhat, but um, not as much as I would have liked. Yeah, this, the sport mode didn't, didn't touch the brakes. Um, I didn't expect it to, but the brakes still feel a little, little mushy. Um, now, what else changed for 2021? Well, there are some subtractions, unfortunately. So the, there, there was an off-road package, which added a limited slip differential and also uh, panels underneath in case you wanted to go off-roading. Unfortunately, that was removed due to the pandemic. Also an entertainment package that was available, that has also been removed. Also a trim level and an engine option was also removed, the X-Drive 50i. That was removed, so now if you want to go up to a V8 engine, you have to go to the crazy M50i, which is over 500 horsepower. So yeah, there was a lot of things actually removed for 2021, unfortunately. Now, as for the suspension and sport mode, I definitely do feel uh, a difference. It's, a, it's still comfortable, but I do feel like, yeah, I feel a little bit more bumps um, just going over pavement, right? So I could tell it did stiffen up Actually, I would say quite a bit versus comfort, but it's still not uncomfortable. The drive definitely feels different in this X7 versus say an X5. At first glance, you just think, okay, X7 is a stretched out X5. But once you drive it, you realize it's really not. It's actually a lot more than that. It is bigger, it's taller, it's more comfortable, it's quieter. I mean, everything about the X7 is just elevated. So it is quite different when you're driving it. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, like I, like I expected, sport mode made a huge difference with acceleration. Not only does the transmission hold the gear longer, lets the rev get up there, right? But also, uh, you can just tell. There's a lot more boost and, and this X7 feels a whole lot different when you're accelerating. What's impressive is this engine is the base one and still you get a very powerful engine, very lively drive. Most people would be satisfied with this powertrain. But of course, if you wanted more power, you can get it, you could opt for it. So next up, let me talk about the different trim levels and pricing and give you my final thoughts on this brand new BMW X7. As for trim levels, the BMW X7 has three for 2021. The base is the X-Drive 40i and that starts under $75,000. Zero to 60 comes in around 5.8 seconds. Then you have the M50i, which starts a tad under $100,000. Zero to 60 drops to 4.5 seconds. Finally, you have the Alpina X7, XB7, which is over $141,000 and 0 to 60 comes in in 4 seconds flat. To conclude, the 2021 BMW X7 is well deserving of its status and price tag. The big luxury SUV looks big and bold on the outside and provides plenty of space and cargo room on the inside. Everything on the inside is electronically controlled and the air suspension makes the ride feel like a cloud and also makes getting stuff in and out a breeze. The X7 is extremely quiet.
by it, provides a commanding view, and has great acceleration. The X7 can also be equipped with all the latest features one would be looking for. The bad to the X7 include the mushy brakes that doesn't feel like it belongs. The steering also has some play, which doesn't get any better in sport mode. There are a lot of packages removed for 2021, and the non-V8 option is now gone. Finally, fuel economy gets slightly worse for 2021. Overall, I'm giving the 2021 BMW X7 a score of 104. To see where it ranks, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Also, check out these other cars.